Um, we're glad you joined us today on this recording of our Career Focus Fridays, and we're excited to have Paula Albron with us, who works for Telemundo in Amarillo. Um, she also works as an instructor at West Texas A&M University, which is how I've had the pleasure of getting to know her. And so I'm so glad she's able to spend time with us today, and we're going to talk to her for a little while about how she got to the job she's in, what kind of work she does, and where she'll then share advice to students who want to follow in her footsteps. So. Um, we're excited to have you with us, Paula, and wanted to start with that first question of just telling us more about the work that you do now at Telemundo. Thank you. Well, first, thank you for inviting me to be part of this meeting, and I'm very excited to um, be right here with all of you guys, and I'm looking forward to all of your questions. Uh, usually a normal day for me starts, well, before COVID-19, because everything changed. Uh, but before COVID-19, I started very early, around 9.30. Um, so that means I have to wake up very early, like around 8 or 7.30, watch newscasts, read newspapers, and nobody's going on in the world. And then after that, I get to work around 9.30 and then we have a meeting. And that's when we start um, like deciding what kind of stories will be on the newscast. And we start um, looking for stories and research. If I have to go outside and do a story, sometimes I do it. Uh, I'm the news anchor for Telemundo and executive producer, but I, I I love to be a reporter as well. So I kind of do a little bit of everything. If I have to do weather, I do weather. I'm that kind of person that since the beginning, I learned how to do everything and I'm open to whatever I have to do, I can do it, you know? So if at, if at some point in my life, I have to go back to be a reporter or be a producer or whatever I have to do, then I learn how to do everything and I'm able to do it. And then uh, that's what I do normally in the mornings and then in the afternoons that I start producing my newscasts. And we have three, well, we have now five newscasts because we do the newscast for Texoma here in Telemundo, uh, for Telemundo Texoma. And we also do the newscast for Telemundo Tyler, which is Mm -hmm. kind of like close to Dallas, and we do it here in Amarillo as well. And then we have Telemundo Amarillo 5 p.m. and Telemundo Amarillo 10 p.m. And then we have a short newscast around 9 um, at night. So I have a long day, and I make sure that everything that is in the newscast is um, that it has good videos, that it's well translated. And then I anchor the 5 p.m. newscast, Telemundo Texoma and Telemundo Tiger. And then um, some people think that after we finish the newscast or anchoring the newscast, we are done. But no, it has a lot of things that we have to do after that. We have to post the stories on social media, on the website, we have an app. So we kind of do everything. And like I said before, I learn how to do everything. And, uh, I help with whatever they need because I have two producers and my producers, they were students at WT. I met them while I was teaching. And so I, I basically do a little bit of everything. I'm that kind of person that doesn't have just one job. I, yesterday, for example, I posted stories on the website, all of them, because my producer was doing something else. She was doing a story about DACA because yesterday the big story of the day was DACA so uh, she was reporting the other producer was doing other things so I posted the stories on the web I posted all the stories on Facebook for the day as well and uh, the app so whatever whatever the, all my days are completely different I, I cannot say that that every single day is the same and you've been with Telemundo since 2011, is that right? The yes. Telemundo station Amarillo? Yes. Well, actually, I did my internship with Telemundo in 2010, but I was officially uh, hired uh, on 2011 as a news anchor. That's how I started, yes. Excellent. And why don't you go ahead and share about your journey to that position, too? So I know you started at age 17 in Bogota, and you could tell them more about that journey. To where yes, you so I was born in Bogota, Colombia, and Colombia is located in South America, 
And my city, Bogota, it, ha it has 10 million people. So as you can tell, it's a huge city. It's very similar to New York. If you have ever been in New York or if you have seen New York in the movies, tall buildings, a lot of people walking in the street. We have a metro as well, so it's huge. And um, when I was, I did my bachelor's degree in communications in Bogota. And then I got an internship with Caracol Television, which is a, a television network in Colombia, like CNN or CBS. It's a big uh, television network. And when I was doing my internship, they asked me if I wanted to keep working in the international section of the newscast. And when I started working with them, I realized that the importance of speaking other languages, you know, because a lot of press releases, they came in Italian, French, uh, most of them in English. And I didn't speak uh, English when, before when I was living in Colombia. So that's when I decided that I had to learn uh, English or at least another language. And I started applying to different universities and different places. And West Texas A&M was the un university that gave me the option to, uh, like, they uh, authorized uh, my visa, because coming from another country, you need a permit to live in the United States. And they helped me with the whole process. And actually, West Texas A&M was an amazing university. They, you cannot imagine how welcoming they were when I started my process. So I, I came to West Texas A&M to learn English. Uh, WT used to have a program called English as a Second Language, and that's what I did. I did level two and then level three. And when I was, go when I was ready to go back to Colombia, uh, I met Dr. Anthony Spencer. I don't know if you remember him, but he was a communication teacher here at West Texas A&M. I met him at the cafeteria at WT, and I was eating by myself. He came and he's like, oh, are you Latina? Uh, yo hablo español, and he used to live in Costa Rica, and then we became friends. And one day I received a letter uh, from WT that says, Paola, if you want, uh, we're offering you the um, possibility to your master's degree here at West Texas A&M and I was just in shock because I didn't speak English at that moment. Um, you don't learn English that fast. I moved here January 19, 2011, 2009, sorry. And I got this letter on May 2011. I I was like, wow, this is a great opportunity, but my English is not that good. And, but Dr. Hanson, Dr. John Heller, everybody, they were like, come on, Paula, you can do it, just try. And I started doing my master's degree in communications at West Texas A&M. And when I started, like I say, my English was so bad, I don't know how I did it. But all the teachers were so welcoming and so nice, and they explained everything twice. I remember Dr. Mahler, you know, many times explaining things, even three, four times if, if they had to. And the experience was amazing. I love West Texas A&M. And I graduated, but as part of one of my classes, I had to do an internship. So. I went to Telemundo because that's the only Spanish-speaking television station here. And when I went to Telemundo, they accepted me uh, to do my internship. And I was that kind of intern that I was every day at nine in the morning there, you know, they didn't pay me. And I stayed there, there all day until five, six in the afternoon, seven. If they want coffee, I got coffee. If they want me to clean, I clean. I was the kind of person that I was like, whatever you need, I'll do it for you, you know? Like my news director or sometimes the news anchor, she's like, oh, I want water. I'm like, yeah, I can get it for you. So I was the kind of person doing everything. Translating, reporting, of course. And they gave me the opportunity to be on TV as a reporter. And when I was doing all of these, the news anchor left. 
And the news director was looking for a news anchor. And I went and said, I know I'm just an intern, but I have shown you that I can do like everything, you know? I, I already learned how to produce a newscast, report. I can even anchor because I did that in Colombia. And my news director is like, what's your name again? And I was like, oh, I'm the intern, I'm Paola. And then he's like, mm, let me think about it. So they didn't give me the, the opportunity. They didn't even interview me or nothing like that. And then they hired a news anchor from Florida. And when she started, she didn't like Amarillo. And then she went back to Florida. And then I applied again. And this time they interviewed me and I got the job. So I think it was thanks to West Texas A&M University and everything that I learned at, here at WT that I got the job, definitely. Because um, in my classes, or even not in my classes, but I, I learned how to edit a video, which I didn't know before in Colombia. I did my own package for the first time, many different things. Um, thanks to West Texas A&M, and that's how I got the job. And I have been working there since 2011. 2014, I got the position to be a manager for Telemundo and also executive producer. And then since then, I have been working at Telemundo and I love it and um, I'm here to stay because I love Amarillo, I love this city. And, uh, my husband, he has a restaurant here in Amarillo. So I think I'm staying here for, for a long time. <laughs> Paula, you mentioned the, um, that you do work for Telemundo, Tyler, and Texoma. Um, so are they the same recordings or you're, you're doing extra newscasts for those communities as well? So it's extra newscasts for them. Uh, because of course, the, the news the news for uh, Texoma and Tyler are different than from Amarillo. We have a producer in each city, and the producer uh, he kind of like organizes the newscast, and uh, we have a meeting every day. Uh, of course, it's by phone, and we kind of like discuss the stories for the day, and, and that's how we do it. And then. He sends everything in English because he doesn't speak Spanish. And then what we do here is we translate the stories and then we try to find uh, thoughts or interviews with people in Texoma or Tyler related to the topic. Sometimes they help us as well. But um, yeah, that's what we do. We translate the stories here and then they, bro they are broadcast um, in Texoma and Tyler as well, yeah. The, the national and international sections are very similar, but the weather is different. So we have the weather anchor and she has to do a research every day on different cities and locations to do the weather for each newscast. But we do everything from here. Mm -hmm. That's fascinating, I didn't realize that. Uh, and definitely the weather would be very different. Um, oh, yes, Texas. definitely. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you're, you're anchoring from Amarillo, um, but some packages are being done locally in those cities with that. That's, that's fascinating. Exactly. Um, what, are, what are some of your favorite experiences you've had working at Telemundo or even going back to Bogota? Um, favorite experiences you've had while working in the news media? Mm, I have too many, um, two weeks ago or three weeks ago, I don't remember, uh, Governor Greg Abbott was here in Amarillo and I had the opportunity to interview him. I think that was a great experience. Uh, I always like to meet um, politicians, actors, uh, people who are involved in media and talk to them and see how different they are or what they think about different topics. Interviews are definitely one of the best experiences that I have had. Uh, so interviewing um, Governor Greg Abbott was definitely one of my favorites, uh, especially lately. But uh, as a Hispanic living in the United States, I love doing stories about immigration. And meeting uh, undocumented immigrants is one of my favorite experiences as well. Learn how hard 
is for them to be in this country without papers and see how they live, see how every day they have to hide from the police. And those kind of stories are really good as well. I had the opportunity, like something fun, for example, to go to the uh, Grammys, Emmys, um, a lot of, um, yeah, those kind of fun events where you meet a lot of singers, you know, like I had the opportunity to meet Shakira, uh, J Balvin, a lot of uh, musicians that I admire and interview them as well. So I think interviews, if you see like most of them, I love interviewing people, talking to the community. Um, so I think those are the best experiences. Um, when I was, when I started my career in Colombia, I had the opportunity to travel to Europe and Egypt uh, with Microsoft. Uh, they, they, like, um, they had an opportunity for students to apply and travel to different countries and kind of like do a stories. And I did it and it was really good because we went to Egypt and we went to Amsterdam and Spain, different places. And then we had to find a story. And once we came, once we uh, came back to Colombia, then we had to put the story together, you know, so kind of like a, a like a report. And that was really good. Uh, that was that has been one of my favorite experiences as well. Every time that I travel, I also try to find a story. Um, two years ago, we went to South Africa with Dr. O and the students from WT. That was amazing as well, because even though sometimes you sometimes you don't know that you can always find a story anywhere you go and i was not i didn't go to south africa as a reporter or as a news anchor i went as a teacher and when i was there i found a lot of stories that i i did as a news anchor as a reporter and that was amazing as well so i think you have to keep in mind that Whenever you go, you can always find a story. You can always find uh, something interesting, something fascinating. And so I find those kind of amazing stories anywhere, anywhere I go. But um, lately, yeah, Governor Greg Abbott was an, a great opportunity for me. Um, so yeah. Excellent. What, what advice would you share with students who want to work in news media in general? I always tell my students and I always tell my coworkers, my producers, everybody that work for me, you need to start from the bottom. You cannot pretend that you can start as a news anchor, you know? Start as a producer, start. First of all, I would recommend you do an internship, find a place that you like, uh, when I did my internship, I loved Telemundo and I love News Channel 10. Uh, that's the company where Telemundo is located, KFDA, News Channel 10. I love the company. I fell in love with everybody there. And I always uh, imagine myself sitting in that desk being a news anchor. That was my dream. But I dreamed being a news anchor since I was little. So I don't know what your dreams are. But follow your dreams and keep in mind that you will not start with the position that maybe you want from the beginning. But I promise you that if you work hard, if you are positive, if you believe in yourself, you will get the job that you dream and you will get the, the job that you want at some point of your life. Uh, I recommend you also to learn everything as much as you can. Uh, like I mentioned in the beginning, I know how to do everything. So if today my news anchor called me and say, Paul, I'm sick, I can do it. I know how to do the weather. I know how to do the graphics. And it's not because my boss has, to, have, has told me, hey, Paula, learn how to do this. It's because sometimes I sit with her and say, hey, teach me. How do you do the graphics? How do you do this? Um, Teach me how to be in that green screen. Being here is different than being here. And I practice sometimes 
I don't have a lot of free time, but if I have free time, I go and practice in the blue wall and then just try to do it as better as I can. I try to learn everything and you know, you, sometimes you find that opportunity whenever you never imagine. Um, as a reporter, when I started doing uh, my internship at Telemundo, it was just amazing. One day, the reporter, she couldn't go. And I went to the news anchor and said, I can do it if you give me the opportunity. And she was like, mm. I was like, it may be not the best thing, or you may not like it, but you can teach me and I can learn. And that's what I did. I was, uh, for the first time on TV, on Telemundo Amarillo, like two weeks after my internship. But you have to show that you are passionate about it. You have to show that you care. You have to show that you can as well. And I did it, and my first time was horrible. I don't know what I was doing, but who cares? I did it. And, and now I am here, you know, but my first time was the worst. And um, so I will say, learn everything, learn everything. I know how to uh, run my own teleprompter. You know, we have like a pedal, like when you drive. So I know how to run my own teleprompter. If I have to print the scripts, I print the scripts. You know, I have, even though I have two producers, if I see that they're busy, I tell, hey girls, I print the scripts today. And they're like, no, 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 Paola, no, no, don't worry. I'm like, I, I know how to do it, like, don't worry. I, I put my own microphone and some people, they are just like, oh, put my microphone. And I'm like, I can do it, you know? So try to, try to be humble. And I think that's how, I, that's why I have, been and I have achieved a lot of things because I have been always humble. You know, if you have to ask a question, ask a question. Don't be afraid of, oh, maybe everybody knows what is that. No, I always ask the random questions ever on the meetings and sometimes they laughed, oh my gosh. And sometimes they're like, what a good question. And I don't care, really, I don't care. Sometimes, since I'm not from this country, I don't know many different things, from history to commercials, you know? Sometimes people, they laugh about that commercial and the Super Bowl, I'm like, I don't get it. Can you explain me? And they're like, really? But ask questions, and um, that will be my recommendation. Be humble, ask questions, be passionate about it. And if this is really what you want, if you want to be on television, if you want to be on media, um, just be very passionate about it and show that you care. Excellent. To, to kind of piggyback on that one, what about if they specifically wanted to work in Spanish language media? Are there some other things they should consider and work on to be ready for that type of career? Um, I think it will be very similar. Um, make sure that you speak proper Spanish because some people think that because they speak Spanish, they can work on a Spanish media. Make sure that you speak proper Spanish. And if you don't, don't worry, just ask. You know, just make sure that you use the right words when you have to. I had a lot of people working with me um, using Tex-Mex words in the newscast. And when I tell them it's not like that, they get mad. Yes, it is like that. I'm like, no, it's not like that, you know. And then I try to teach them, but don't, don't think that because you speak Spanish, that's the right way. You know, there are Spanish from Mexico, Colombia, Peru, Venezuela, Puerto Rico. Uh, so a lot of people that speak Spanish and we have different, um, ways to say something so don't think that because you are from mexico and in mexico you say um i don't know uh, maybe uh sandia to watermelon that's the right word in colombia we call it patilla in other words you call it different in other countries you call it call it different so don't don't believe that because you speak spanish that's the right of spanish be open about other cultures be open about other people because we're all different. We are all Latinos, Hispanics, but we all speak 
uh, completely different. Uh, but this, the, the rest, it will be the same uh, as any other media. <clears throat> Excellent. That was my last um, planned question, but if there's anything else um, you wanted to add to um, like pieces of advice, then we're gonna um, open it up to questions from our students. Is there anything else you wanted to mention before we open it up to them? No, I think it would be important to mention that you need to find the opportunities. Uh, there are many open positions everywhere in media, but don't expect the positions to find you. Don't expect them to see, oh, would you like to work here? Because you will never find that. You have to go and you have to um, you have to go and you have to find the job that you want uh, but you have you have to you have to be very aggressive and try as much as you can and if they say no in one place try another one and try another one place and sometimes they tell you no many times and don't settle for that try to um try as much as you can and don't settle when they say no not everybody not every single news director is right maybe another one would like you and maybe another one will think you are the best even though the first one thought the opposite so go find the opportunities because there are many many opportunities um everywhere excellent well, we'll open it up for questions now to our um, our live studio audience, per se. <laughs> what questions okay. do we have today? I'm going to jump in, uh, Paola, uh, with, with one question. Um, at, at the very beginning, you mentioned uh, what your day is like before the, uh, the uh, coronavirus. Uh, what kinds of changes and, and adjustments have you had to go through uh, with the current situation? That's a great question. Um, right now, um, I don't go to work at 9.30, like always. I go to work like around one or one thirty or sometimes two, and I try to do as much as I can, uh, like producing the newscast from my house. I have all the equipment here at home, and um, I try to produce everything from here. And then when I get to work, basically it's just to put the microphone and sit in the chair and start doing the newscast. We start Texoma at 2.45, and then Tyler at 3.15, and Telemundo Amarillo, we pre-record Telemundo, and then we do it at four. So basically, it has always been like that, but now I get to work a little bit later, like around 1.30 or two, and just check the latest things of the newscast and be ready at 2.45 to start doing the newscast. So basically we're doing everything from our own houses uh, in terms of producing. And then after I finish Telemundo Amarillo, we go home, we try to go home like around six uh, in the afternoon and then put the stories in the website, Facebook, all of this as much as we can do it from our own homes. But we never stop going to Telemundo. We, um, they, they asked me if I wanted to do it from my home, but um, I told them I'm not that good with technology. And <laughs> I, re I think I will have a lot of problems doing it from home. So I told them if I have to, I'll do it but I'll prefer to go. And they were fine with me. Um, some things that they do at Telemundo every time that we go there, we get there, they check our temperature, make sure that we don't have fever. Uh, we have to wear the mask all the time, but when I do the newscast, I remove it. Um, and a lot of people are working from homes, so I don't get to see most of my coworkers. 
um, now, uh, like the cell departments, creative, commercials, and all of those departments are working from home. So I don't get to see my coworkers, but yeah, our lives change a lot um, in terms of we don't get to work um, as before, as like from 9.30 to, my schedule used to be like from 9.30 to seven or eight sometimes. And it's not like that anymore. Um, we, like um, after this, I, I will go to Telemundo and then just anchor the newscast and then come back home. I don't stay in the building for uh, long periods of time. Okay, thank you. Oh, wow, well, and something else. We are not doing interviews face-to-face -face anymore. Uh, we're doing Zoom interviews now. Uh, well, with Governor Abbott, actually was face to face uh, because he came to Amarillo and they let us interview him, which has been the only interview that I have done in the last four months. Um, and I think that's, that, that's what I think has been so special because I haven't been around people as always. And I think part of being on media in my own opinion is you have to be with the community you have to know what's going on um, when you go to a restaurant just talk to people and find stories and see what what's going on and that has been challenging because you don't talk to people face to face anymore so that was that was different thank you Do you guys have any questions as students? I actually have um, a question. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank you for being here um, because it's been giving me a lot of insight too. Um, and I just had a question because I know in this career there's so many paths that you can take. Um, and sometimes many people feel lost, like they don't know what to do. So I know I felt this um, a couple of times. Have you ever felt like lost because you're in this like big ocean of um, media broadcasting everything? So any experience with that? Valentina, what are you interested uh, on? What, what kind of job would you like to do? Um, personally, I love um, just like what you're doing. I love doing it all. Uh, so I love being behind the camera, in front of it, editing, filming. Um, but my like big goal is just to inspire people. And I'm kind of having a little trouble trying to figure out what, um, where like I kind of fit in. But you started out at such a young age. And um, from a girl who also my family's from Bogota, Colombia. Um, I see that and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, that's so like, that's so similar. Like, how did you figure out at such a young age that's what you wanted to do? Well, Valentina, I don't know. Um, I was a kind of child always watching TV. Uh, I was not that kind of child playing outside or I'm the only child in my family. Uh, only, only daughter, only uh, niece, only grandchild. So I was always kind of like by myself with a lot of adults. And one of the things that I liked the most was watching TV and watching news, which it was weird for my family because I always watch news. So I kind of knew since I was little that I wanted to be on TV. And I remember my mom many times saying, like, you will never be on TV, Paola, you know that, you know? Like, that's hard. And so I grew up with that mentality. I would love to be on TV, but I don't think I will never be there, but I wish, and that was my dream job. And when I told my mom, everybody in my family are lawyers. So my dad is a lawyer, my mom is a lawyer, everybody are lawyers. And when I told them I want to study communication, my dad didn't talk to me like for two weeks. He was like, what? Communications? You will not make money in communication? And I was like, it was crazy because uh, I wanted to be on TV. 
And I remember my dad also saying, you will never be on Caracol or everything in it because that's, that's so difficult. And I did it. I was on Caracol. I got my internship and I worked on Caracol. So I know sometimes we feel lost because I felt lost and I didn't have the support of my family for a long time. Uh, but you will find the opportunities and you will... I don't know, I don't know if you believe in God or not, but I always pray to God and say, you know, God, this is what I want. But, you know, find, ask the universe, like my best friend say, she doesn't believe in God, and she's like, I ask the universe. But ask whatever you believe in uh, to get you to that what you want, you know? And my own personal life, I think it was a little bit of, I was a little bit, it was, I was a, a little bit lucky to start my career very early, but I think I also had God with me all the time helping me. Sometimes I was like, wow, thank you, God, because I will never achieve this without you. So I think, um, don't feel lost. I understand you, Valentina, it's difficult. And, but when you want something, you will get it. I promise. Apply to jobs. And if you want, come to Telemundo. Um, ask Emily for my email. And then come to Telemundo. I'll give you a tour. I think right now we are allowed to have visitors, which we didn't for a long time. But whenever you feel comfortable, come to Telemundo. I'll give you a tour. And um, you can see what we do. And I can show you personally uh, what we do. And I can I can talk to you a little bit more, but this is only this is not only for you for everybody, uh, all the students who are connected. If you guys want to come to Telemundo, let me know. I'll give you a tour. That's what I usually do. I introduce you to my news director, all the producers, and then it, it will be up to you to open the path and see what you can do. And most of them, they always get a job. They always, when they go sometimes, my news director is, who are you? And then you go to WTO, tell me more about you. You know what, we have an open position. Would you like to apply? And then it will be next up to you and see if you get the job or not. But thank you, Valentina. Thank you. And Paula, I'm imagining you have contacts with Telemundo um, all over, and not just, um, not just with Amarillo, Tyler, and Texoma. So just to mention that to Valentina too, it wouldn't just be contacts she has with those three cities either. So yeah, um, yeah. Oh no, we have. Um, I don't know. If, have you ever met uh, Sulema Salazar, Emily? No. Well, Sulema, she um, she started here in Amarillo and she graduated from West Texas a and and now she's in Telemundo, Washington. Oh, she's in D.C., and, that's right. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and WT has a great communication with her. And sometimes she helps her students to get jobs mm -hmm. at Washington, you know, internship, things like that. Um, and then it will be, like I say, up to you to see how far you go. Uh, but I usually, I go every year to a conference for Hispanic communicators. And last year it was in San Antonio, but I have been going for the past 11 years. And I had, I had the pleasure to meet a lot of people from news director to executive producers from around the entire United States. And Sometimes they ask me, why are you still in Amarillo? Apply, um, I don't know, Denver, Las Vegas this year. The news director told me, why you don't apply with us? But I always tell them I love Amarillo. That's the place that uh, where I met my husband, where I have my family. This is the place that welcomed me. And I don't have any intentions to go anywhere, you know. I am happy teaching at West Texas A&M. And, but I have a lot of contacts everywhere in the United States, uh, from Telemundo to Univision, uh, CNN, one of my best friends is Nick Valencia from CNN. Uh, he just won yesterday best um, journalist in Atlanta. So we have a lot of contacts. It's just, sometimes you just say, oh, I have been looking for a job in uh, LA, 
And then we always have that person. One of my best friends from Barranquilla, she's the news anchor at Telemundo 52, which is in LA. And yesterday, like three days ago, we got a reporter from LA. She is right here. Her name is Vania Patino. And Vania just started her career. She started in Telemundo 52. But she will never be on camera because she didn't have the experience. So they told her, go, get experience, and then come back. And she is coming from Telemundo 52, LA, the biggest uh, market for Hispanics. And sometimes it's just little connections that you have that I can help you with. So yes, Emily is not only in Amarillo, like you say, or Texoma or Tyler. It's like, we know a lot of people from everywhere. Right. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned an association too. So that's another way where you can plug in and meet other people and see other, you know, opportunities um, where you can either collaborate or different career paths that you might not know about yet. But oh yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Then it's, it's called the National Association for Hispanic Journalists. If you are interested um, or somebody is interested, just go and check that. And we have a conference every year. It's not that expensive. And it's definitely worth it, definitely, because you get to meet all the news directors from every single Telemundo. And this is a good place to start if you, if you are looking for opportunities. Well, thank you so much, Paula. I really appreciate your time uh, joining us on this interview today. And um, it, we'll be posting it on YouTube later, and I'll definitely share, you, share the link with you. And I'm so glad, Valentina, that you're here and you were able to ask a question. And thank you for coming, Aaron, as well. And Ray, and Joe, and Jim. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Emily. And it's very nice to meet you, Joseph, and Jim, and Ray, and Valentina, and Erin as well. And uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity, and I hope that um, I inspire you a little bit with my, my story.